Hi guys, Anthony here. I hope you're doing well. Just wanted to give you a different type of video from the Amphi Live community and that on investing in green energy. Uh, things like solar, wind, electronic vehicles, these are all really hot topics at present. And as such then, we wanted to give you a bit of an insight as to how we would go about composing a basket of different ETFs, single stock equities, and how to basically express a view and the timings and landscape of what green energy investing is all about. So no one else better to do this than one of my colleagues, senior trader Tim Duggan, who will talk you through a session that we shot earlier this week. Hope you enjoy it. One of the core questions in the room here is, um you know, Tim, uh, looking at, um, at spending a stimulus check, uh, what would you, what would your thoughts be on longer term investing um, in the green energy plan, renewable energy, and so on and so forth? And so, I thought it'd be good to just record a little bit of of my, you know, my thoughts on this and what we're seeing. So, um, let's get into it. So, essentially. It's kind of tiered in a way, and this is really good for me to actually um, also flesh out my my thinking on this. And you know, we've got um, really it's future energy. So really, what have we got? We've got we've got renewables. We've got renewables, right? Renewables, and within that, we've got like solar tech. We've got uh, grid. Oh, we've got, uh, or let's say smart grid. Um, we've got probably uh, materials. Materials is like, you know, photovoltaic, photo V, um, you know, solar paneling. So let's just say solar materials. Um, and yeah, you, you know, then you go into like winds, uh, you can go into hydro. And something else that's coming out of this is, um, is uranium and to a smaller degree gas right and so you know this is the whole picture of the clean tech you know renewables and and clean tech but you know we, we can it's natural for us to think oh well right clean tech in combustion engines out right it's very easy to kind of just take that position of thinking but it's it's you're not serving yourself too well if you do that because essentially these are minnows all most of the companies um that are in like uh that i have here you know these are all minnows like smart grid these are startups effectively in a way and uh, you know maybe sme enterprises um and they're doing great stuff and they're getting and they're getting uh they're getting bigger and bigger investment and they're obviously now with the green energy plan they're they are going to come out of that minnow sort of status and the background and the shadows and really start to over the next 20 to 50 years i mean um, these companies will be the dominant players in what has been a traditional energy picture, um, you know, um, that is like, say, hydrocarbons, uh, oil, like, let's, yeah, let's not make it, let's not fancy it up, right? Let's just call it like oil, oil and gas and coal. Right. And in here, you've got, you know, you've got like the big players like BP, Shell, um, Exxon. Um, now, these guys are, these guys are pretty much the top two are fully integrated. 
these are fully integrated companies, which means they own the entire stream. Right, so that means that BP, they, they do the exploration and production, um, as in they find it, drill it, ship it to shore, they refine it, and they retail it. That's called fully vertically integrated um, as an oil company. And, the, and to a certain degree, Exxon, Exxon actually is, a, is, is, is fully integrated as well. Um, so actually, let me just make this really easy here. Yeah, so now how many of these companies on the left are or can be fully integrated producers to, to, to marketplace commercial uh, or consumer grade sellers of their products. As in a wind farm that, gen that, that, that makes the turbine, puts up the turbine, generates the energy from the turbine and retails it to your house. There aren't many, there, there probably are a few and their, their market exposure is probably quite limited when you look at the, the, these absolute, you know, uh, like planet sized companies. I mean, each one of these companies here are bigger than uh, most global governments. And that's hard for people to realize, but they are, and they, they sway more influence than, you know, uh, like the US administration, for example, uh, has sort of less global impact than a company like Axon or Shell. And people think, well, that's a bit conspiracy conspiratorial to think like that, Tim. But believe me, I've read enough and researched enough and worked in this industry, and that is just a fact. And if you think that that's a conspiratorial thing to say, I'm afraid you haven't read enough about this topic and about these, these industries. And it's very naive to actually um, poo poo that idea. So these are very, very, very big corporations, the biggest, right? And they sway the most power. Um, I can recommend some books if people are interested in reading about that. But the point being here is this is not a binary a uh, zero sum game whereby essentially there's one loser and there's one winner. BP are already ditched on their renew or on their on their oil and gas EMP. They're getting out of refining of uh, refining with refining. Uh, Exxon sticking it out there to the end game for sure. But BP are already transitioning to a lot of this, a lot of this. A friend of mine in Shell is the head of transition to a lot of this, right? And these guys have more cash available and will be investing in snapping up all of these elements over time. So what you could do is, how do we invest in this, Tim? Right? How do we invest in this? Well, there's two ways. You can invest in and believe in the transitioning of these marquee companies from their fully integrated abilities to then transition that to smart, clean, renewable tech, so on and so forth. You can believe in that and invest in that. And sure, I mean, I'm suffering, I'm probably at a loss of maybe $30 per share by investing in BP um, on the down move last year, as opposed to Shell or Exxon. They are trading at about a $30 premium to BP um, because of the price of oil right now. But over, uh, that investment I made is literally five to 10 year investment. You know, and you can't, you know, I can't buy them all um, at the level I want to want to invest in this. But I, I feel comfortable in BP. Right? Bad earnings, last earnings, but, you know, don't care. Bad full year earnings, I don't really care. Um, so you can buy BP, Shell or Exxon um, and you know, the story of, of who will be around in 20, 30, 40, 50 years time, and more importantly, who will be the major player in this area? Are we going to see a wind or a hydro company rise to the ranks of one of these companies on its own? 
No, they're just going to get bought out. Um, but the point being is that how to play this investment is there are in this, you can invest in, you know, let's, let's kind of create a, where, where to look, right? I'm not, I'm not an investment advisor and this is informational purposes only. So I have to caveat that, but in, in looking at this, well, we could, we've got green energy. And the subsectors I have below, there are ETFs that cover, you know, wind, solar, uh, photovoltaics, um, uh, there are, let's see, uh, renewable energy. Uh, ETFs that are baskets of all of the companies that have described above here, all right? And so I like the ETF story. I mean, this isn't, e we're not even getting, we're not even touching on the, the topic of electronic vehicles here. I mean, we're not, you know, that's a whole subsector in this conversation um, that we have to do another session on, to be honest, um, which I'm invested in uh, for all due diligence purposes. Um, so you can look at playing ETFs and you can look at playing stocks. So you've got, you know, ETFs, you've got individual uh, stocks, right? Um, you've got your, I don't actually have a lot of the name, a lot of the individual equity names within these, within these um, breakdowns, but you know, you can find that information out very easily, um, very easily. You know, so individual stocks, uh, you have ETFs, individual stocks. And um, then within those, you can play options, you can own outright. Uh, I would not do any of this stuff leveraged at all. Do not do that would be my advice. You know, um, but adding into this, you also have, um, you know, the traditional names. traditional energy and you know you got your just you can buy bp shares right dividends uh shell dividends you know um the etfs aren't going to be paying dividends they are a little more tax efficient but you know the individual stocks um is pretty much this part Right. So you can have essentially then when it comes to portfolio construction, you can have, uh, you know, you want to, so the portfolio construction. Would consist of something similar to this, right? Um, you would say, okay, I want a couple of racehorses. You know what? With any portfolio, you kind of say, what are the what are my racehorses? Now, this is just a personal analogy, but that I like to have. What are my racehorses and what are my turtles? Okay, well, you're starting to get a picture here, guys and girls, aren't you? Well, my racehorses are that really small uh sorry let's say solar solar like acme solar right acme is a word for an a, you know abc xyz company acme solar right so hi, what you want is to explain this is basically actually i i e um, high growth, high growth, right? And and the and the turtles are your uh, steady, steady natties. 
D, was it N E D D Y, right? Setting eddies. And you know, this is going to be your VPs, shells, uh, axons, et cetera, et cetera. The high, the race, the race forces, you know, PAA, for example, PAA. The, the race horses are going to be the speculative companies, the ones that are breaking new ground, uh, putting in new smart grids, uh, like high growth, for example, would be Tesla. Right. That's a race horse. Um, I have an ETF uh, called Hail. Oh. Hail. There's another ETF uh, called iDrive. I D R V, and these are all electronic electronic vehicles. So, right, these are electronic vehicle ETFs. But this is the portfolio construction, right? And so we do want our resources, we do want our turtles, and we and we we believe in the general growth over time of the entire sector. So it's more thematic, right? The what this portfolio would be, it would be based on a thematic investment, right? Um, that's how you would call this. Um, so you're, you're betting on green energy. And then, you know, I mean, maybe you have a portion, your sector of the, this is your EV sector of the overall green portfolio, right? Um, and then, you know, you put more resources in here, like uh, NEO is a, well, NEO is another EV. I mean, I'm pretty hot on EV right now. So NEO is another one, right? Um, it's a Chinese, it's basically the Asian version of Tesla. Um, you know, but what else? I mean, you'd have to go and find, you know, I might ask Shelby to find uh, some of these companies for us uh, in this, you know, in, up here, who are the winners and losers up here, right? You know, and you have to track, once you have a couple of interesting names, you kind of got to track them for like maybe a, at least a quarter, kind of see how they react to certain shifts in the economy and the macro environmental news picture, see how they, they respond to certain things. You know, are they overbought? Do you want to put on alerts to, to buy them when they fall to a certain level? I mean, I, w I think a lot of this stuff is horrendously overbought right now. Um, actually, since uh, three months before Biden was elected, these things have been going up like at parabolic rates. No joke, parabolic straight up. So I do like I, I want to have, you know, most of these in the in a portfolio, but I'm constructing really at the moment I'm constructing the the um, the EV part. Right. I've done this already on the EVs. I might actually take a bit of overweight myself to Neo actually soon enough. And I'll certainly put Tesla in there. If I get if I if I get like 400 on Tesla, boom, I'll buy more of that. And then I'll over I'll be overweighting myself here. I like hail because it's oh it's actually hail is actually overweight neo and underweight tesla right but i, I want a bit of exposure to tesla 400 because i think that's good value right but there are individual names within this and you need to think right well which one they're all pretty much racehorses but which are the real thoroughbreds in here and which are the ones that yeah they're going to come in somewhere in the middle of the pack um but generally they're going to appreciate over time but all the while, you cannot discount these companies that are literally bigger than the government that has told you to stay inside for the last year. And they are going to be buying up any of the, any of the good value resources that come past the winning post, if you like, right? So this is kind of just a smattering of portfolio construction and how I look at the green energy space that's coming. Um, you, it is important that if you're putting a lot of money at play over a, over an undefined time horizon, that you get paid, get paid dividends, right? Get paid dividends. The banks aren't giving you anything on your money on deposit. Why not just put it into something that's paying you deposit, paying you a dividend? And all the while, then, as your overall portfolio um, appreciates over time you're then making dividends on, on, 
on the sort of the bonds, if you like, of this portfolio, you know, the resources and the turtles, the turtles are essentially like, you know, these are like equities, right? And these are like, uh, you know, the bonds, right? Cool. A couple of questions in. Yeah, and the books, right, the books. Um, so the energy picture. Oh, one of it on there. Um, where's my, I'll take my whiteboard up. All right, so another one of the, one of them here, I'll get, get an image and drag it in. So the first is The Prize by Daniel Jurgen. Now this is, this is a big book. Um, this is a huge book. <laughs> it's, you could kill a man with this book. It is literally something you could probably put, you know, your car up on if you needed to, you know, do some work underneath it. It's a biggie. Um, but essentially, Daniel Jurgen is the world's foremost authority on the oil industry. To be honest, uh, he won a Pulitzer Prize. The guy, whatever, what the guy doesn't know about oil, uh, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. It's a thick book, but it's it's interesting and it's well worth uh, well worth it. He actually has a new book out called Well, I won't get it out because it's equally as big, but uh, called the new the new what is it the new world. Um, uh, the new order, the new order of energy. Yeah, it's called the new order, and it's really about the new order of energy, right? And I can't wait to read it because there's going to be more insights into what the future is for a lot of these companies. That he's tracked their developments for the last, you know, since they were were developed. Like, you know, Shell. I mean, uh, Samuel Samuel started Shell uh, in uh, what was it, 19, 18, 18 in the 1840s, I think. 1840s selling uh, selling shells from the Far East as trinkets of of uh, of um, interest to Londoners, and that business took off wildly. And then he got into trading food like rice and uh, flour and corn, and then it developed uh, that business into then trading oil on a global level from all from London. And that's that, that's why Shell is called Shell essentially, uh, because. The company started off selling uh, boxes covered in lovely, pretty shells from from tropical waters in the in the Far East. So, uh, Daniel Jurgen, the prize. Uh, another one is um, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. So, this is actually a fantastic book. This uh, will really open your eyes up to how global governments and global economics actually works. Um, so John Perkins was um, a consultant, a government economic consultant for the Mann Group and a couple of other companies that um, have been at the, at the center of a lot of um, controversy for the last 50 years actually, um, when it comes to uh, funding projects in developing countries. Uh, there's, there's information about, in here about the deal over the Suez Canal, over the Panama Canal, and what the government, how the governments approach, try, how the US government in particular um, tries to vie influence over um, the development of these type of projects that are of you know global inter interest. So these are my book recommendations for today, for my Monday recommendations. I'll put the links to them in the room. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So uranium, yeah, uh, Seifang, I'm actually not up on the uranium thread of this story. And I'm, I'm just really at the, at the start of developing my own knowledge about the uranium relevance in this space. It is, it, it basically, it's a clean way of producing energy but obviously from the fukushima incident we've seen that you know these nuclear volatile products have have you know tremendous and tragic impact and fallout and you know 
I don't need to go on about the uh, the Chernobyl incident. Um, you know that's well documented. That's why we have radon barriers in any houses that we build now, because essentially there is radiation that was from the fallout of Chernobyl in the eighties that spread across most of most of Europe actually, and that radioactive material. Uh, fell down into into the ground into the earth and then there is a certain raised radiation exposure that comes from that from from the ground now and that's that's just a fact so if you you're actually i don't think you're allowed to build a house in technically in the european union without a radon barrier on on the on the floor so um yeah, so uh, sorry, say pain. I'd have to brush up on that to be able to talk about it um, in any capacity, really. So I'm not going to just jump in there on that conversation. So yeah, hopefully this is some interest and some uh, some insight into uh, how I see um, how I see the, the attacking this. Uh, you know what we see is a uh, you know the movement to green energy, and just to footnote this, you know. We do have, you know, how, how, do, what is the catalyst for, you know, what has been here, this future of energy has been, you know, uh, sort of a nascent industry for quite some time, you know, uh, trying to find funding, trying to find development. Well, we know what the, what the catalyst is now, Biden dollars, um, green stimulus. Some you silliest dollars, right? So uh, that's the catalyst. That's why we're going to see a shift, a huge, huge shift to you know this, all of this stuff here, um, to do something like this. All right. Thanks, folks.